Dr. De Deborah Davis, who's going to join us in just a moment. She's an epidemiologist who works on disease prevention and environmental health factors. Again, my focus here when we bring these great guests on is to answer your questions directly. I'm going to have to start uh, with a very, very important area. Incidentally, Dr. Davis won the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize uh, on the team of IPCC scientists. Joins us on Skype and on our guest line as well. Dr. Davis, it's a, a real honor to have you here on the Mike Gallagher Show. Thank you for taking time to join us. Uh, thank you for having me. You bet. I'm going to play a clip from the president yesterday over this issue of this anti-malaria drug. We have a lot of listeners lined up to ask you specific questions about COVID-19. I just can, I'm trying to temper my excitement and optimism over what we're hearing about this drug, but I want to play what the president said yesterday in the, in the daily um, COVID-19 briefing. Here it is, courtesy of uh, CNN and Grabian. Pleased to report that clinical trials in New York will begin existing for existing drugs that may prove effective against the virus. At my direction, the federal government is working to help obtain large quantities of chloroquine. And uh, you can look from any standpoint tomorrow in New York. We think tomorrow pretty early, the hydroxychloroquine and uh, the z -Pack, I think, is a combination, probably is looking very, very good, and it's going to be distributed. We have uh, 10,000 units going, and it'll be uh, distributed tomorrow. Uh, it'll be available, uh, and is now. They already have it. They're going to distribute it tomorrow morning to a lot of people in New York City and New York. And Dr. Davis, I know for a fact that at least one person who I I know personally who was treated in New York City last week was given this this uh, cocktail of hydroxychloroquine and um, a Z pack essentially antibiotics and uh, he I, 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 yeah, this is anecdotal uh, I, I'm not trying to to give anybody false hope after he got that cocktail he had he was he was in the ICU double pneumonia. 41-year-old male, no underlying symptoms. After he got the hydroxychloroquine um, Z-Pak cocktail, he went home the next day. He, he made such a dramatic improvement and, a, and such a profound recovery, they sent him home the following morning. What are your, what are your thoughts on all this conversation about this anti-malaria drug being available? Well, as Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx have said, that's a, very, that's a good anecdote. It's a clue. But it's not proof um, that this is going to work. And I think one of the things we have to keep in mind, Greg, is this is this person was y relatively young and probably relatively healthy. And right. hydroxychloroquine can be very toxic to the heart. And it's, it is intended to prevent malaria. It's an old drug. It does have side effects. And in a small number of people, it can cause permanent damage to the eye. Uh, and it can cause psychiatric problems that are quite substantial. On the other hand, it's promising news. And the French trial that we hear about was not a randomized trial. It was what we call an open-label, non-randomized, so the doctors knew who was getting what treatments. And the youngest patient in that trial was age 10 and had no symptoms, and the oldest was 60. Now, that's rather important. The, old, the oldest patient in that small French uh, trial, which was not a randomized trial, was not older. And, and the age group that we are seeing the most deaths in. And we need to be cautious before uh, uh, trying this drug, on, particularly on the elderly, because it's known to have uh, the side effects. It's been used for a long time to treat rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and other things. So we have a history of it. That's the good news. But we want to be careful because in that trial, some of the people didn't finish the trial because they died. Uh, some of them found the drug uh, too toxic to tolerate. And the total number of people in that trial that there's such excitement about, and I think, frankly, undue excitement, was a total number of 36 people, 10 of whom were taken as controls, 26 of whom got hydroxychloroquine, and only six of whom got hydroxychloroquine and the z pack So six I people... Just, I, yeah. I just find it know? fascinating that in New York City, they're obviously dispensing it now. 
um, because th the patients are telling one another who happen to be in one particular business community, hey, get the doctors to try this. That's what they gave me last week, and it worked. And so, it, you know, when the president says, well, it's, 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 it's about to be implemented, in, in some cases, it's already being implemented in New York. Well, they're doing a randomized controlled trial, which is appropriate, which means that you take people and you randomly assign them to either get the drug or not. Now, Got it. Uh, I know I'm not in touch with the doctors who are organizing that trial, but one of the things that I'm sure they're being very cautious about is making sure that they uh, look at comorbidities of people before they give them the drug. That means particularly to take into account, do they already have heart disease? Because again, this drug can be damaging uh, to the heart. Um, so we want to be very careful because you only want people who are very ill uh, to get this drug. Well, and incidentally, the one anecdotal story out of Florida was the, yeah. was the guy who said that after he was administered hydroxychloroquine, his heart started racing so rapidly he thought it was going to burst out of his chest. So he obviously had – fascinating that, you, you know, that you're saying that about the heart and some of the right. side effects that could impact the heart. All right, let's take some questions for Dr. Deborah Davis. She's an ep epidemiologist who works on disease prevention and uh, environmental health factors. We'll start with Allison. Allison, welcome. You're on with Dr. Davis. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm 62 years old, and I have mild, uh, very mild asthma, just allergy-related. I take Singular for it and a, 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 a lift, Brio Lift inhaler. Uh, once a day, so I was just wondering how what how much I should worry what my risk factor is really are. I've never mild it. mild asthma is that an underlying health condition that people should be concerned about, Dr. Davis? Uh, yes, it is. However, if you follow what the president is asking us to do, and avoid any crowd, and basically, I think people of you of of our age, if I may say, should be in some form of self quarantine, limiting their social contact, keeping six feet distance making sure that whenever you come in from any outdoor activity, you wash your hands with soap and water long enough to sing happy birthday twice. Those basic <laughs> things are really going to make the difference. And that's, by the way, in Korea, where they've had a much better success rate, they started with those things much earlier. And they also had, which we do not have, they had testing available for the general population early on. And the lack of right. testing has been a real problem for us. Oh, uh, you know, you mentioned South Korea. The, their their death percentage is around the same as ours, which I think is encouraging too. Is it not? We we both seem to be hovering around 1.3, 1.4% 1 of people who die after contracting the virus. By comparison, Italy has been as high as 9%. Are you encouraged by that percentage here in the United States, Dr. Davis? I am encouraged. At the same time, I'm frankly troubled by the uh, 20 to 40 year olds who don't understand that they actually are at risk. And let me tell you something interesting about the data. We originally got data from Wuhan, China, where this outbreak started. And it did look like there were very few people of the total deaths in that age group 20 to 40. But I think I know why. Uh, I am a visiting professor at Sichuan University. And what I can wow. tell you is that kids, so to speak to me, kids that age, 20 to 40, Right. are from the generation of the one-child family. So as a proportion of the population, they're underrepresented there in China. And so when the first data came out, it was what percent of deaths was in that age group. And of course, it was very low because they don't have that many people of that age group in part. Right. So I think right. what we are now finding is that 20 percent of deaths reported by the CDC just a few days ago are occurring in people under the age of 64 and over the age of 20. So this idea that you can party on if you're a millennial is not correct, and we're going to see some serious problems in that population. And I think we have to ask these people, do you want to kill your grandparents? Yeah, that's that's just it. I mean, the uh, the selfish the selfishness of, of of people who just seemed oblivious to any of the guidelines that the CDC and the government are giving us is 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 staggering. You know, I I uh, being being sort of isolated in my in my home, working from home in my condo kitchen. I I live on a beach. I live right on the Gulf, and I see a lot of beach behavior. Our beach, the my beach closed officially by the order of the county and the governor uh, this past weekend. It was I think it was Saturday at midnight. There are people out on the beach in chairs. Yesterday, I watched four kids 
playing, uh, you know, playing, playing some beach game, all just, you know, just interacting with each other, high fiving each other, four of them. And it's like, gosh, I just want to stand out on the balcony like the like the grumpy old man in the Muppets movie and say, do you know what your kids are doing? What's wrong with you? Well, you know, perhaps, unfortunately, uh, maybe that's what you need to do, Greg. I think that it's a it's a huge problem. And uh, I've had a similar in- encounter with some people here in the mountains who are hanging out, drinking, sharing a body bottle of whiskey. Oh, goodness. Um, and I and I stopped and I spoke to them, and they looked shocked when I told them that you may think you're impervious, but it turns out millennials are not immune. If anything, right. they're going to find a huge toll uh, on on this population. So we, I hate to say it, but we might need um, beach police, and um, because. <laughs> I, you don't want to poke fun, and, and people can go out and they can run, and they can do things right. as long as they keep a distance. Now the reason Just keep for that, a distance. That's right, and the reason for the six foot distance is if you sneeze or if you are projecting more uh, from your respiration, right. you, it doesn't go more than six feet. And we're pretty sure right. of that. It goes actually less than that. So that's right. why the president and the CDC are asking people. Please avoid these kinds of contacts. And the more you continue that, the worse it's going to be for the elderly because you're going to be spreading it to them. And the other part of this is that the young children, as you indicated earlier in your show, the majority of people who get this will have will be fine. More than 98 percent of people will be absolutely fine. But it's the small percent who are elderly or who have existing problems who will not do as well. And we Brian, need to rec- little kids yep. don't have any symptoms at all often. Sure. Brian, you're on the Mike Gallagher show with Dr. Deborah Davis. Go ahead, Brian, with your question for Dr. Davis, please. Yeah, I have a question about uh, these bags that people are bringing into the stores. Should should they stop bringing them in, in bring them in for now or wash them or what should what should we do with that? Yeah, the re- the reusable cloth bags, Dr. Davis. You know, that's a very smart question and what I would say is this. The bags themselves <clears throat> ideally are supposed to be washed, right? They're supposed to be, if, if they're reusable, you're supposed to be able to put them in the washing machine. So I think it's a good idea to just to take the opportunity now, uh, since we're all generally focusing on this, to clean things. But understand something. Cleaning removes dirt and grime. Disinfecting removes bacteria and viruses. And those are two different things. So by all means, washing things will remove stuff. But if you want to really disinfect, you need to get a spray, which you can make yourself with uh, Clorox and um, water or with other things. The recipes are all on the CDC website that you can make yourself. You don't have to spend a fortune on it. And disinfect and spray and don't wipe them off after you, after you spray. Let it air dry. Disinfection right. is important. What I suggest is any things that arrive at your house that are remotely damp or whatever, let it dry and then disinfect with a spray and then open. I think that's at an abundance of caution right now. You have to assume that anything that's brought into your home might have the virus on it, although, of course, our hygiene standards for our supermarkets are among the highest in the world. Uh, listen, we're grateful for your for your time, Dr. Davis, and uh, appreciate it. We hope you'll come back because it's such a great public service. So many people have so many questions about pragmatic, you know, practical day-to-day things that we're all experiencing together. And uh, and like I said, I'm very grateful you could join us here on the Mike Gallagher Show. All the best. And one other thing to you before I go, and that is sure. that vitamin D is being used right now in Wuhan, in Shanghai, to prevent the coronavirus at doses of three to six grams. And for, there have been reports of using it intravenously in the ICU for people who are very sick with remarkable recoveries reported. And uh, I will have more to say about that on our website, ehtrust.org, shortly. I'm working EH with Dr. ehtrust.org. EH and, and you broke up a little bit. You said vitamin E? Vitamin C. Vitamin Ascorbic. C, okay. That's right. Gotcha. Old-fashioned vitamin C. It doesn't have to be fancy. And you take... And for an adult, you take as much as you need to get a, a loose stool and then back off of that. And that's the dose that you need to prevent absorption of this virus. It's been shown to be remarkably effective. And there's more trials on that, frankly, than there are on hydroxychloroquine. Fascinating. And your web, the website again, doctor? E-H-trust.org. 
We'll have this information up later today. Appreciate it. Dr. Davis, God bless you. Thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you so very much and taking the time out of your day.